Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your wellies. Hi, this is Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 460, Get the Look, English Country Style. I feel like I say I'm very excited every time, but I really (laughs) was very excited to work on this because my first love, although I am very devoted to French style. I mean, that's what I'm known for. But English country style was my first love in decorating. How about you? I love it too. And, you know, even if you don't consider yourself English country style per se, there are elements of it that work in so many different decors. So yes, I definitely am drawn to it. I've an Anglophile for sure. The time that I lived in London is, you know, with, kind of with me all the time. And I think it really influenced my decorating when I came back here. It's a really easy style to live with. And so we've got a lot of great tips today on how to get that look. And we're thinking about creating a series, get the look, maybe each episode, a different type of style. So let us know what you think about this one. And we're kicking off with one of our favorites, the English country style quick description of what it would look like. I mean, you can add your thoughts to this, but I think of a mix of antique furniture, a comfy sofa, maybe even a little tattered (laughs) with uh, comfy pillows and cushions, rugs, you know, fabric shades, floral prints. I mean, that sort of thing. Dogs, uh, just a very casual, inviting, comfortable look, not too fussy, but just a very welcoming lush, but not hard to maintain look. Also something that embraces imperfection, celebrates a little bit of the wear and tear. Like you're saying, maybe the sofa's a little tattered. Comfort is definitely uh, yeah, really, really important in this look. Muted colors of nature. It's a timeless style. You've got a mix of antiques, but there's some modern pieces in there too, because it it's not stuck in time. It's timeless. Uh, so you definitely don't want to make it sort of Miss Marple-y. That's really not <laughs> what we're talking about I love about Miss today. Marple. <laughs> I know, but maybe not her decorating style. It's just a little too twee, as the British might say, right? So I think it's a mm-hmm. casual elegance. It's... um unself-conscious, not trying too hard. You're going to have some florals. You're going to have some chintz, but it's going to be fresh. Uh, Definitely potted plants, loads of books, an unassuming kitchen. I'd put a table in that kitchen rather than an island. If you can get yourself a mudroom, terrific. And as Anita said, dogs, you know, maybe throw in some horses, exposed wood, some beams, There's a lot of ways to add all of these things to your home, but these are some of the major hallmarks of the style. And as we go through this episode and any other ones that we do that are get the look, we're going to discuss the hallmarks of the look, and then we'll talk about how to implement them and incorporate these looks into your home. And then also we're going to give you maybe some specific tangible items to add and or resources to learn more about the look. So let's get started and talk about how you can add this look to your house. Okay. Want to kick it off? Well, I'm going to say some really vintage or antique tapestries or fabrics can really add this look. And you, what you could do is even buy an old bedspread, something with a lot of texture to it that has a very antique feel to it. In fact, I bought a Victorian French, well, it's actually, it's French, tapestry or bedding I'm really not even sure what it is that I draped across my bed but it's a jacquard it's so beautiful and it does not look like anything that was made in this century so I mean if you can find something old even an old uh, abusan rug or something if you were to drape that across I mean clean it first but then like draped across a sofa I think that's a great look or you know the the idea of just a an old bedspread that's really an L has a beautiful look 
uh, just kind of used as a slip cover over a chair. That's part of the look. Yes, and definitely some older pieces, some antiques, some vintage pieces. It's an enduring style, so it's not going to be trendy. It's not faddish. So while you might add some modern pieces, they're also going to be nice quality modern pieces. They're not going to be something that you know you pick up necessarily at Home Goods or something that is like the owl of the moment or the butterfly of the moment. It's going to be something that really has enduring decorative style and power in your room. And you know what? You don't have to be English or live in the country. I certainly don't have to live in the Cotswolds, but you don't even have to live in the country to enjoy this mm-hmm. English country look. Because did anybody realize that it this look was actually perfected by an American named Nancy Lancaster? So Nancy Lancaster back in the 40s bought Colfax and Fowler. Mm -hmm. The civil Colfax had maybe fallen on some hard times because she lost a lot of money in the stock market. And maybe that's what prompted the sale. But Nancy came in and uh, really just sort of nailed down this English country look. And, you know, took what the English people were doing, but really then sort of put her mark on it as well. So you've got the American in the mix and uh, Cole Fox and Fowler will be one of the resources that we uh, talk to you about towards the end that you can go check out what they're up to now. Back in the day, they were an interior design firm and now they're doing all kinds of fabrics and things like that. Yeah, well, you know, we Americans just like to come in and just take over. So... (laughs) Everybody needs a little help. <laughs> I, I'm not sure they needed help from us, but I think that was probably, she was probably defining it for the American market. And uh, because there are a lot of America, Americans uh, had the money to buy the things, but they didn't have the tradition. They didn't have the old uh, antiques that had been passed down from generation to generation. And they wanted that kind of a look. And that's kind of what we're looking for is a look of things handed down generation to generation. So one of the easiest ways to get that look is to go buy antiques because that's what you have. If you have something handed down from several generations, you have an antique. So you're going to look for something that's maybe a quality antique and an antique market. And now is one of the best times to buy an antique that I've ever seen. And it doesn't have to be an English antique, but this is going to get that handed down, that worn, that uh, not brand new look. And that's kind of what we're saying too, is this look of things having a patina to them, things having a bit of age to them. Uh, and having not nothing being so dear that it's just perfect. And so that's what an antique will do for you. So what kind of, I mean, and there's so many different antiques. It's hard for me to even cover all the different kinds of antiques that you can add. And that's why I'm just going to kind of add it as a, a large category. But, you know, things like bust and statues that they don't tend to make these days, uh, antique candlesticks, um, that sort of thing would be perfect in your country English home. And a big piece that you can add is an English rolled arm sofa. So if you haven't um, seen or you you can't really um, conjure up in your mind what that looks like, we'll put a link in the show notes so you can check it out. But an English rolled arm sofa or a Chesterfield would really be a very important, prominent piece. If you really are wanting to get this look, it would be good to add a few large pieces like that um, to your whole ensemble. Well, and in front of that sofa, you're going to want a the biggest ottoman you can possibly find for the dogs to pile on, for everyone to now take your wellies off first, but then put your feet up on there. <laughs> Don't wear them inside. Uh, but I think that's just a very comfortable look. And I love a large ottoman for use in a room because it's great to, you can put a tray on so then you can serve your tea or your cuppa uh, there from the tray. Uh, but also you can have a vignette on your tray, but then take it off. It's extra seating. It's a place for, for feet when you're just kind of hanging out and reading books and maybe watching TV. So it's, it's just such a versatile piece of furniture. And piles of books. Now, I would definitely suggest some older books. Now, those might be for display. Or there's so many newer versions of older books now that are done in a beautiful way that have beautiful spines. So if you've got a bookcase in your would-be English country-style room, then maybe you want to fill it with either 
real old books, vintage books, or look for these sets. Like they, they have sets of um, the Jane Austen books and various other books with just really beautiful spines, just really done nicely. And you can have a whole collection. What about uh, My Soulful Home, A Year in Flowers? I think that would make a great book. <laughs> Put that on top. <laughs> Loads of books, mine or, or Anita's as well, could be in the mix. Pile them up, put them on the bookcases, put some on the ottoman. And also you could add in some of those ginger jar, the either blue ones or different colors. That's a really Englishy sort of look. And, you know, put three or four of them in different uh, places around the room or put a grouping of three together. Absolutely. And another thing that these old English country homes have is usually a lot of interesting molding or perhaps it's a cottage and maybe it's got the beams and the ceiling. Your house probably doesn't have that. So a way to kind of make it look like it's old or maybe has some interesting architecture is uh, put a dark color on the wall. And that's going to give it a kind of that warm feeling like, um, like maybe an English study or something. So you know all those dark colors that we talk about, uh, the paint colors, uh, this might be the time to go grab a, a can of one of those. That's a really great idea. And if you don't have beams uh, and you don't have any wainscoting or a beadboard, you can add beadboard. You can add wainscoting. Beams might be a little bit trickier to get on the ceiling, depending on how your ceiling is situated or if your home is more open concept, that might be a little bit harder. But yeah, I think if you're adding some woodwork, that would be terrific. You could either paint it, get paint grade and use this darker colors and add some sconces, especially if you're doing the darker colors. That What a really warm feeling you would get if you had sconces on dimmers against a dark painted wall. Really lovely, really cozy. Throw in some plaid, maybe some oh, throws I love and plaid. pillows. And yeah, and, de- and definitely don't forget the flowers. Now don't think uh, Laura Ashley 1981 or 82. You know, we're not really talking about those those kinds of flowers necessarily where it's just so much and it's poofy and it's a little overdone. It's a little bit more understated, uh, a little more reserved and a little more casual. Mm -hmm. I also, I'm thinking about artwork on the walls too, because you've got to have some artwork on the walls to have this kind of look. And it, it kind of leans toward the cluttered look, I would have to say. Not cluttered, but that direction. It's not minimalist at all. So what you're going to want are architectural prints, botanical prints, old portraits. I love buying old oil portraits. They're so interesting. And I just, I don't know, I just am very fascinated by them. So that's beautiful. And landscapes, those are that all those types of artwork would be very typical in a an English country home. Yeah. And I would stay away from framed posters or something that looks mass market because nothing's going to really, you know, put the dagger in the English country (laughs) style than like, you know, a poster of a horse or something like that. (laughs) Definitely all the things that Anita listed would be fantastic. And you could do a gallery wall or you could just do one large piece. It had a little whimsy too. You know, I'm not suggesting sort of like dogs smoking cigars at all, something like that. <laughs> not, not that whimsical, but, you know, if you're going to have animals, it can be, I mean, not cutesy. Oh, but the animal sort of, portraits too. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of fun. There is a sense of whimsy to this look too, because it kind of goes with that easygoing, imperfection, wabi-sabi-ish feel. It's not about everything being pristine and new. And I think if you have a lot of pristine new things in the room, it's it's gonna it's going to diminish the look. So think old and kind of a little a little shabby. And what about the big baskets that you're going to have around the room? These could be kind of like the French laundry baskets or big oval baskets, but I'm thinking big baskets. Or if you were lucky enough to go to Fortnum and Mason, you can put your Fortnum and Mason basket out that has the big F and M on it. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yeah, so uh, so baskets are great, and I love your idea of the blue and white jars. I think that is very much uh, in keeping with this look. And what about some Oriental rugs? I mean, that is so traditional too in this in this look is to have some Oriental rugs, uh, or like you said, the plaids. I love the plaids, and I even have a houndstooth rug. It's just kind of a, a little more tailored looking, but it's just a very uh, just a nice look. 
Yeah, and layer your rugs. So much of this style is layering, whether it's, you know, pillow on pillow or something over the back of the sofa or ginger jars set up, but there's a some painting behind them. There's a lot of layering going on here. You know, supposedly been collected over years and years and years. So layer your rugs. Add another layer there. Is you're getting texture. So you could put a sizal, which is going to be a little bit more modern, and then put a textured rug on top of it or something with some sort of pattern be really beautiful then put your ottoman on top of that but keep all the colors sort of of nature there's not going to be a lot of primary colors there might be these darker blues and greens but again like pulling from nature well the other thing i would say is it's the opposite of minimalism so and it's kind of an undecorated look so i would say with this look it's very much okay to have a, a lot of different colors in the room i don't think you want them fighting but i think it's okay to have one pillow that doesn't really necessarily look like it goes with another one because what you're looking for is a look of a room that has grown over time so it's not everything does not match the pillows are not all exactly the same all the pieces of furniture are not the same think of a room that has been put together over maybe a whole century perhaps Yes, that's exactly right. So you could have a needlepoint pillow on top of a floral and a plaid behind it. Yeah, right. Because we talk about doing a limited color palette. And in general, I think that's a great idea. With this one, I would, with this look, I would relax that. The other thing that we want to talk about is the kitchen. So what would an English country style kitchen look like? It's going to be more relaxed. You might have your pots exposed. There might be some copper. You might have your utensils, your beautiful wooden utensils in a crock. As I mentioned at the beginning, you're going to want a table rather than an island if you can do that. You know, doesn't have to be where Mrs. Patmore would come in, but something that looks like it would be okay, you know, if the dog was curled up in the corner. Oh my gosh, if you could get a fireplace in there, I mean, that would just be fantastic. I'm seeing a scrubbed pine English table. And, you know, when years ago I had one, but it only had room for four people. And at the time, my mom was staying with us a lot because the kids were little. And I had to change it out because we could not fit a fifth person at the table. And mm. um, a certain somebody is still mad at me for selling that table. It was so pretty. It was I, really nice. In fact, it sloped in the center. It was so old. Oh, <laughs> kind of sad. How wonderful. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. 
Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. And add some potted plants. It's a really nice way to add an organic element to the room. And not just one potted plant. In an English country, family room, living room, you would have a whole group of potted plants together. And maybe in different type of vessels. You can also tuck some in the bookshelf. I love that idea. And I think that some potted plants and some fresh flowers are so nice. Another fun thing to do is add some old antique clocks. And you know what? It doesn't matter if they're broken. You know what? They're going to be correct twice a day. And you know what? In my book, that's good enough. (laughs) So uh, I don't even bother getting them fixed. So I love these old antique clocks and I have uh, several in my home and I don't worry about the time. They're just so pretty and they're just so well made. And and I'm I'm just talking about a, a clock that you would maybe a mantle clock, although you don't have to have it on your mantle, but that kind of size is what I'm talking about. Not necessarily the, the, uh, grandfather clock. Another pattern that we didn't talk about, we talked about plaid and we talked about florals, but some ginghams or, or even bigger buffalo checks. That can be very English country style too. And that's an easy fabric to mix in with some florals because as Anita said earlier, you don't want all your florals sort of fighting with each other for attention. So if you've got a big floral, then maybe add in a, a gingham or a plaid or a buffalo check and then a smaller a floral or a, maybe a paisley or something like that. So if you had a, a big pattern, a smaller one, and then one of these sort of checks, albeit a large check or a small check, that's a really nice combination. And then maybe you toss on a needlepoint pillow or something cruel work or something super special. And that would be lovely uh, a, as a grouping on your sofa. It's interesting. What you're talking about are very, very simple prints. And these simple prints end up being more elegant than something that's a little more involved. And it's kind of the, I guess, the paradox of simplicity. And the, you know, the more simple the design, the more elegant it is. So definitely these uh, plaids or chintzes or buffalo plaids, these looks are just so classic and will always uh, be in style. And they've been around for a long time. Another thing that you can do with fabrics, because that's another thing, a, a English country look has lots of fabrics in the room. So I'm thinking fabric draped across, you know, it, remember the old long time ago, maybe your mother had it, the, the round table that had the, the fabric on t- the skirted t- round table. Uh, now is the time to go go look for getting one of those. Or maybe it's even a square table. Maybe it's a side table that's ugly and you don't like the way it looks. Go mm-hmm. get a beautiful tapestry or a piece of fabric and, and drape it over the table. Instant country English look. Yeah, I like that idea. Well, I have a round, one of those round tables and I have a burlap round tablecloth with fringe on it from Ballard that I have in the corner. And you know, the thing was, next to my sofa... Because my sofa has legs, I didn't want another leggy type of end table. So I needed something that was going to fill the corner and also just not have all the legs and and have so much air under it like the sofa does. So I wanted something that went to the floor and I didn't want just a chunky piece of wood. So it's working beautifully in that corner in my living room. So, I mean, I definitely think I have a lot of English country elements in my mm-hmm. home. Would mm-hmm. I say it's it's 100% English country? No, but I think that's the idea about English country. It it's not 100% itself, you know, I mean, because it incorporates a lot of different things that all come together in this collected look. Um, so I, I, I love that idea of coming up with one of those tables. I mean, sometimes they're just made of particle board, so it could be so inexpensive mm-hmm. that you just, or cover something that you already have, and you could do that. That might be your chintz moment or something. Mm-hmm. You know, that's maybe where you go crazy with a big fun print. 
Right. And as we're talking about all these fabrics, I mean, think about these trims and fringes and tassels. This is all part of that layered, layered look. That is the English country look. Again, think opposite of minimalism. You're, you're going to want layers. You're going to want lots of fabric. You're going to want it to feel very cozy. Uh, another way to add it is um, with wallpaper or paneling. I mean, you don't want the walls to look too boring. So we're thinking rich color or paneling or wallpaper, any of that would, would really add to this look. Yeah. And I would say, get some floral wallpaper. You know, you, we've been talking a, a lot about this sort of main room or family room area, maybe around the hearth or something like that. But think about the bedrooms. Uh, maybe that's a place where you would want to add some floral wallpaper or a bathroom or a powder room. Uh, also, uh, canopied beds uh, with fabrics over it. They really did like the fabric. And probably back in the day, it was cold. So it was good to have <laughs> a lot of fabrics, and especially those ones around your bed. Mm -hmm. So think about how you can add that in. Uh, let's talk about window treatments. Now, you could do something very simple, like a really nice, chunky linen. Uh, but you could also have florals on the the uh, draperies, but maybe something uh, simpler with a really nice trim. And that would be a little bit less expensive. You could buy a really nice linen panels and you can even add your own trim to it. Absolutely. What about slip covers? I think slip covers also fit in with this look. So, and if you don't have a slip cover, but you want that look, just kind of grab a large piece of fabric and just tuck it in or drape it over. And, and that's been done too. I think it's just such, again, think fabrics, fabrics, and layer the fabrics. I want to hang out in this room. It's a very inviting look. I think a lot of people can add some of these elements. And again, you might not want to go all the way and start speaking with a British accent, but you might want to just incorporate some of these. One more thing that I'm thinking of that's so critical in this look that we haven't mentioned yet, and that's dishes. Oh. stone, transferware, old antique dishes. I mean, you want them cluttered on the shelves. I mean, just, and you can have different colors together. If you want all white, you could do that. But this is... And I love dishes. So any style that, any decorating style that includes lots of antique dishes, I am there for the win. So um, I think this is just a great way. Just pull out all those dishes and don't keep them uh, locked away behind a door. Get them all set out on all your shelves. Right. In stacks or uh, plate racks would be great in your English country style kitchen. So many ways to use them. And yeah, I love the idea of the transferware. I love transferware with anything, but with some plaids and whatnot. It's just gorgeous. Oh, so true. Other resources you might want to check out, House and Garden UK, which I absolutely love. I, just <laughs> I look was... At, uh, you, you were going to say that too? Well, it's absolutely my favorite. I, I go there all the time just when I want to smile, when I want to relax. And then there's a book called English Decoration, A Timeless Inspiration uh, for Your Contemporary Home by a guy named Ben Pentarith. So I'll link that in the show notes as well. It looks like a really lovely book. I don't personally have that, but I checked it out and um, it looks like it's spot on for what we've been talking about today. And I have a couple of uh, Instagram accounts that you might want to look at. I want to pile onto the houses and yeah. magazines before you go onto Instagram. So a couple more magazines that I think you might enjoy is the Country Living UK version. And that's put out by the National Magazine Company, LTD. Then there's the English Home uh, by the Chelsea Magazine Group. And that, I, I'll link to that because you can actually get that on Amazon in Kindle or print. Uh, and then there's a couple of books I was going to mention. Uh, these are I think this this first one I know we've mentioned in our book episode, At Home in the English Countryside, Designers and Their Dogs by Nina Campbell and Susanna Salk. Uh, that one just looks so charming. I uh, have then, that. That's an awesome Okay, one. I'm going to have to get that one. And there's two more. The Perfect English House by James Peel and English Country House Interiors by Jeremy Mewson. What Instagram accounts did you find? Amanda Brooks. I believe she was something important at Barney's, like whether she was the creative director or something. She has a beautiful Instagram. It is filled with pictures of her own home. And she also has, I think, an Instagram separate account 
for her shop. Uh, lovely. So Amanda Brooks on Instagram. And then uh, if you like your English country mixed with a little rock and roll, then check out Pearl Lowe, L-O-W-E on Instagram. She is super cool. She has done uh, collaborations with Duval Kitchens, which is a big gorgeous kitchen company in the UK. And so her kitchen has been featured everywhere. If you scroll through her Instagram, you might recognize her kitchen, but she's just got this really wonderful way about her. And she lives in this fabulous, definitely shabby in the good ways home in the English countryside. So enjoy both of those and check out the books and yeah, definitely check out uh, House and Garden UK because that's definitely something that Anita and I love. We'd like Mm -hmm. you guys to enjoy that as well. So what's our hot topic? This is a Wall Street Journal uh, article, and it is called How to Turn a Blanket into a Statement Headboard. I think this goes along with what we're talking about today with our topic of getting the English country look. Because if you've got a beautiful tapestry like blanket or quilt that you can hang on the wall that's going to add more fabric more warmth more personality and more coziness to a room and so this article kind of talks about how they did it but really i think the key thing that they mentioned in there is if you have a blanket or tapestry or something and you want to put it behind a bed and kind of make it into a headboard it's probably not going to be the right width so what you're going to want to do is add fabric to it so they kind of added a velvet pulled out one color and added that in velvet and made kind of a frame that's sewn on to the tapestry uh, before they hung it behind the bed and you remember i think that was when i was working with you on the um Texas flip and move, or maybe it was a house I did without you. We put a rug as the headboard behind a bed because we were kind of as one of a an idea. I think you, I think you did that the first time without me. Okay, okay. So that's something that that you can do even is put put a rug back there too if it's the right kind of rug, uh, like a flat weave. I mean, you wouldn't want to put a, a plush rug back there, but a flat weave rug with a pretty pattern, I think, would make a beautiful headboard great idea because sometimes the headboard is just a hard thing to figure out and depending on your size of your bed and the the way your room's configured so yeah it's good to have all those sorts of options and something a little bit different and you can actually put it behind your headboard too if you want that look it's great for artwork behind your bed and then you can put your head if you have a headboard you can still keep it on your bed and it's a because i think as much as i like this idea i'm a little nervous about then leaning against it and maybe too much pressure on it, it might kind of want it pull it down Mm -hmm. off the wall. So I think it might work better even if the bed had a headboard. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. 
Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Well, what's your crush? My crush, well, we're in the bedroom. My crush are these new sheets I just got from Garnet Hill. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, we love the linen sheets, uh, but these have a ruffle on them. Oh, and I love a ruffle. They're just so beautiful. The ruffle is just so charming and the quality is so great. Oh, nice. And I have had Garnet Hill. I realized when I got this that I have had a Garnet Hill blanket on our bed like a layering blanket. Oh my gosh, it has to be 10 plus years because I know we had it at the other house and I know we've had it here. So the same blanket and gets washed all the time. It looks brand new. And I have some Garden Hill pajamas that I've also had for a really long time. They're kind of my favorite if it's really cold out or like cozies, cozies. Like if you don't feel good, like those are the pajamas you go to because of the coziest. And they also last for so long. I, th I think it's the Swedish cotton that they use for those mm. th those um, pajamas. But these linen sheets is what my crush is today. Absolutely gorgeous. And they come in, I think, a gray and also an oatmeal. But oh, I got the white ones. Love them. Mm, nice. And this is kind of what we're ta we've hit on a lot on our podcast is that when you buy quality – it's going to hold up. You're going to end up saving money in the long term because you're going to, it's going to last, you know, like a hunter boot or a really nice linen blanket or sheets. They're going to last a long time. And so even though you may have paid twice as much or three times as much for it, it's going to last and you're going to enjoy it the entire time rather than cheap sheets that you never really like. And after a couple of years, they're pilly and you don't like them anyway. And then you've replaced them, you know, five times. I hate pilly sheets. I do too. I mean, so. who doesn't hate pilly sheets? <laughs> like, no no, no. one has ever said, I like pilly sheets. I know. Yeah. I know. So my crush is very practical. Uh-huh. Uh, I was looking for some uh, floodlights for our farm, but I didn't uh -huh. want to hire an electrician. And so I thought, oh, what about some solar-powered motion-activated floodlights? But the last time I bought solar powered lights it was just a big bust so i was kind of very skeptical i did go on amazon and check some reviews and found a set of lights that uh, had good reviews and we put them up and i i've waited on reporting on this because i wanted to make sure they had worked for several months and they have and it's oh. it's so i mean it's really such a nice thing you're saving so much money not paying an electrician and you know you're saving some money in electricity it's not a lot but because these are led lights they don't require a lot of electricity you know a lot of charge to power those lights mm -hmm. so it doesn't use up a lot of energy so a solar panel is going to get you enough energy and then it's got a battery you know that stores the energy for when you need it but mm -hmm. the nice thing too is it's three parts the 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 uh, motion sensor, the light, and the solar panel, and you're going to adjust each one separately uh, so that it's set up appropriately, so that your solar panel is hit is motion is turned so that it gets the most light, and then you have the uh, motion sensor, so it's going to be triggered where you want it to come on, and then the lights also adjust, and, oh. it, and you can do a pretty wide field. So I'm I'm really thrilled. It's it's oh, practical, good. but you know what? Everybody needs some of those lights, so you're not getting out of your car in the dark when you come home. No, that's a great crush. Yeah, no, that's very useful. We don't have a lot of outdoor lighting, and that's something I've been wanting to look into. Yeah, well, uh, you can check this out. Yeah, I think I will. Awesome. So our question today is from Marcel H. Marcel recently moved into a new home, and the backyard is just a complete flat expanse of lawn. And she's wanting to know what she can do sort of on a budget to make it beautiful and that 
will draw people out so they can enjoy the yard and for some entertaining, you know, when we are able to do that again. Well, you're the garden person, so I'm just going to mm-hmm. throw out a few ideas and then leave the bulk of it to you because okay. you're the you're the outdoor person. But, you know, I'm thinking you can definitely add some things with some height. Uh, so different heights of plants are going to add to make it feel a little less flat. But, you know, again, where I live, the backyards are so small, it's postage stamp size, and they're all square and flat. So uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad look to start with. I've seen a lot of people do the square concrete pavers, the really, really large ones, and then just kind of have some seating in there and maybe a little a little pit with a little fire pit and some some plants here and there and kind of more of a modern look. And it's just beautiful. So I think there's a lot that you can do. I like the way that Marcel phrased the question, you know, to draw people out, right? So if you have everything right by the back door, I don't know how big this lawn is, but you know, if you have everything right by the back door, that's where everyone's going to stay. So maybe put something all the way at the other end. Now it can be something as simple as a bistro set. So fun today. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult with Anita and I. We can't wait to talk to you.